Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Friedman test using Python 3 in JupyterLab. So this test can be used if you have multiple paired ordinal variables, indicating that also the categories in each of those variables must be the same. Um, you can either do a Friedman test, and uh, this can be s actually seen as an extension of the Will Coxon signed rank test, although it's actually perhaps more an extension of the sign test. Um, and then the Wilcoxon signed rank test is actually limited to two variables. The Friedman test is an extension where we can do all variables, three or more, in one go. To show how this works, I'll use uh, Pandas data frame as an example. So um, a data file that I have, uh, or actually I'm going to load it as a data frame. So I need Pandas, uh, import Pandas as PD. If you never installed a package before and um, you also need pandas to load your data, then you can probably use exclamation sign pip install pandas to load it once, uh, to install it once, and then you can load it. Then I can use the read CSV file, and head will show me the first five records. So this is some data from a survey among students. And um, for the example, I make use of all the variables that were concerned with the teacher. Those were seven in total, and I combine them into a new separate uh, data frame, and I'm also going to remove any missing values immediately. So now I only have the seven um, fields that I'm interested in. Now you might notice these are text, so fully disagree to uh, fully agree. And I need those to be numbers, so I'll use a small dictionary, fully disagree to be one, all the way up to fully agree being five. And then I can use that dictionary to replace um, every field with the values in that dictionary. I only need one dictionary because all the variables should be paired, so they should be using the same categories. So now everything is numerical. Then we can use the Friedman test. We can use the Friedman chi-square function from the side by stats package. So I'll load that one in. And it simply wants you to select all the different fields. And then it will return you some uh, results. So let's have a look there. And in the example here we get a 49.786. That's the test statistic. And the chance of obtaining such a value, or even bigger, if, w if there wouldn't be any differences in the population, that's the significance. You see an E minus 0 0.09, so that means that there are uh, 0 point and then 8 zeros, 5, 1, 8, 8. So this is really, really, really small. Uh, usually if it's below 0 0.05, we would deem it to be significant. We can also use the Pingoian package. Uh, this requires the data to be in so-called long format, and to do that we need an ID field. So I'm going to add one column, respondent ID. So as you can see, that's now been added, and that simply uh, gives a number to each respondent. And then we can convert those into a long format, where basically each of these columns is actually placed underneath each other, and there's one additional column with which uh, factor that actually uh, belong to, or which criteria. So I can do that with the melt function. So now I have uh, one variable where there's the teacher motivation, and I will have the uh, respondent ID multiple times. So for each respondent I will have all of their scores but now vertically. And then I can use the Pingoian package and I can use its Friedman function and we should get the exact same results as before. Again 49.78 and uh, the 0 0.88, uh, sorry 0 0.00005188 so the same results, and, we, and as an additional bonus, we get the degrees of freedom. Now, sometimes some people might actually say that an F approximation might actually be preferred, and you can do it with this um, little formula. That isn't too scary, it's just the total number of cases that we have and the number of variables, which we can get from the shape of our data, and Q is simply that Q statistic that we get here. So I can get those separately, and then I can fill out the formula, and I get my F value. To convert that into a uh, P value, or a significance, I need to know the degrees of freedom, which is K minus 1, and the other one is N minus 1 times K minus 1. 
So those are also not too complicated. And then I can use the F distribution from the side by stats package to finally get our other uh, way of calculating a p value. And this is 0.00, and it's still extremely small, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, in the appendix, I will actually um, uh, go over the, um, the formulas uh, for the chi square distribution uh, or for the original approach. And except for the chi square distribution, avoid packages. I'll leave a link to my website where you can download this Jupyter notebook from as well. So if you'd like to follow along there, so I'll quickly show it, but uh, it probably will go too fast for some. Uh, I still need k and n, the number of uh, variables and the total length. I need to rank some stuff, so I have for that my own little function that can do some ranking without any additional packages. Uh, it's probably not the most efficient one. Uh, now I can create an array with those ranks uh, and then we can sum up all the ranks and once I have everything in ranks I can start using the formulas which is basically the average of all the possible ranks and then we need the uh, average rank for each variable the sum of squares in total and the sum of squared error and we ha actually have all of this so that's where this piece of code comes in and then the Q statistic itself is actually the sum, um, the total divided by the sum of squared error. So that's going to be that 49, the degrees of freedom for the chi-square distributions, k minus 1. So in this case that's 6. And then we should be getting, after we also imported the chi-square distribution, that uh, uh, 0.00005 etc. So there you have it, the same result, but then over the formulas. Okay, I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.